Hi, this is Matt in the library, and in this video we'll be reviewing the DSM library, which includes the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders 5th edition, also known as the DSM-5. The first thing to really understand about the DSM-5 and accessing the DSM-5 is that it really is its own database. It's its own resource called the DSM library. So the DSM library is a pretty straightforward resource. It includes really just the DSM-5 plus some additional titles uh, like a handbook of differential diagnosis and clinical cases, as well as an update and any future updates to the DSM-5 that are published separately uh, from the main title. So it's pretty self-contained. And when you're finding it, what you need to do is go to our homepage and then click All Databases. It's in this alphabetical list of resources. So you won't find it as easily using the search box on our homepage, what you want to do is go to it because it is its own database. The second thing to know about the DSM library and DSM-5 is to not overthink it. Uh, to open up the DSM-5, click the title, the DOI number, or the table of contents. All three of those actually bring you to the exact same page. This leads directly into our next tip, which is you are already reading it once you get to the table of contents. And what I mean by that is sometimes the format of the DSM library throws students off because they might be expecting an ebook that looks like scanned digital copies of a physical book with the exact page numbers and treatment uh, that you would if you bought a copy of it. The DSM library is formatted differently. It's kind of like the book as a website. So once you get to, you know, let's say section two, where uh, a lot of the diagnostic criteria and codes are, if I click on a specific topic, I'm just gonna pick one at random here. Uh, once I open that up, this is the ebook. I am now reading it. Uh, so it's not gonna open in a new window. It's not gonna go into an e-reader mode. Uh, it, it really does just, it used to sort of look like a website. So keep that in mind when you're using it. Uh, once you get to this point, you, you really are reading the DSM-5. Now that you've got the DSM-5 open, we do highly recommend browsing through the book versus searching through the book. You can browse the entire table of contents from uh, the table contents page that you see once you click the title, DOI, or table of contents link. So we recommend looking through the different chapter headings, clicking on a chapter, that you're interested in or required to read. And then once you're there, uh, because some of these are quite long, click on the sections menu. That'll actually show you the specific sections within this chapter. Uh, we feel like this is the most straightforward way to use the DSM library. If you really do want to search by keyword, uh, the option is to the upper right corner. Just keep in mind that's going to link to everything within the Psychiatry Online platform. So that's everything the American Psychiatric Association publishes, including things we don't subscribe to. So if you do use this search, uh, go, to the, uh, go to the publications area and then click on DSM Library to the left. That'll filter out everything so you just see uh, what we have access to you can see it says full access and then if you then see a search result you're interested in you can click on it and it'll bring you to that keep in mind also it'll be searching the handbook of differential diagnosis and clinical cases and other handbooks and anything they, they ever add to the dsm library not just the dsm-5 so that's another thing if you just want to stick to the dsm-5 uh, the best way to do that is usually browsing for for what you need for our last tip, know that you can link back to any section in the DSM-5 once you've uh, gotten to it. So if you want to uh, bookmark a specific chapter, you can do that. EBSCO and some of the other databases and resources and library have a difficult time uh, bookmarking the URL from the address bar. DSM library is not one of those. You can actually copy this link right here. Uh, there's also a share button, but honestly, it shares this exact link. So you can, if you're really just wanting to bookmark and get it back to it later, that's probably the most straightforward way to do it. Also, uh, you can print out any page in here, at least on my computer, whenever I've done this, and you can see me using the print option within Google Chrome here, I have the option to save as a PDF. So if I just want to save this entire chapter, I can do that. It, it shows up. Some of the PDFs can get quite large. Some of the chapters are quite long. Uh, so you might want to save it first before physically printing it out. But you do have those options available to you to save specific chapters for later. 
That's it for this video on how to use the DSM library. If you have any further questions about using it, reach out to us at library at purdueglobal.edu.